welcome. A little bit about myself, just so you know. Uh, my name is Angie Spear. I work with Stuart Title. Uh, I've been there going on 15 years now. Most of what I've done there is uh, vendor management. Uh, I have managed our uh, notary base for the last five years or so. I may have worked with some of you before. Um, if not, I'm looking forward to working with you guys in the future. Uh, the point of the class is so I can work with you guys in the future. Sign up with our providers. That's, that's how you're going to get the job. Um, as we have signings in your area, we're going to reach out. So um, having um, all your credentials is, is key to get that. Um, and then as we get the work, we will reach out um, and, and advertise it or however our signing providers do it. Um, but with um, the closing exchange and SnapDocs are our two self-serve platforms that we utilize. Um, if you're out there in an area that we're looking and we send you the order, just respond and, and we'll select you if you're the best option. Um, but it's having your credentials um, is top. I, I can't um, stress that enough. I have emailed more notaries in the last couple of weeks. Hey, your background check's expired. It needs to be uploaded. So you, you can request that and have it uh, uploaded to your profile. If you pull up your background check report, there's actually a date listed and it's the date that was pulled. We can only accept orders for you up until that date. So you can't have a signing scheduled um, af falling after that date because you're out of compliance um, per our lenders. We do check signingagent.com before we reach out because I can see if you've got a background check that's been redone through them or not. Um, but it's, it's going to be whatever the date listed on that background check is. But yes, to get it, you just have to sign up with our providers and we have to have orders in your area. So today, we're gonna learn some common issues to avoid at the signing table. We're gonna go over typical docs that you see at the signing table and they're docs that we constantly see errors on. Um, so I wanna make sure we can go over that with you. And then I'm gonna uh, give you some tips on how to wow the borrower, which in turn is gonna wow us. So you make that borrower um, experience great and it's going to come back to us and that's exactly what um, we want to do. So I want to talk to you about errors. Um, it's something that, that we see a lot of and it's something that happens. Everybody's human, it happens. Um, but it's something I, I want to make sure we can focus on so you know where we see errors at, where you can kind of uh, work to avoid those. So compared to 2017 to 2018, we're pretty much the same in terms of what we're seeing as the top errors. Uh, the borrower signature issue is, is always our biggest one, followed by fax backs, the notary acknowledgement issues, and then printing issues. Those are our top four categories. 13% of all our files in 2018 had an error on it. So you got to figure that we had about 2,000 errors last year um, from our, our notaries. And so all those errors then impact funding, um, delaying a lot of things, which then could in turn cost uh, the title company or even coming back to the signing agent to recoup some of those costs. So break down those categories so you kind of know what fall into them. Uh, the borrower's signature issue sounds like what you think it would, would be um, something about the borrower's signature. But it's also dating, so if the date is wrong, um, we know the beginning of the year is always a big one where uh, 2018 is 2019, so we see that for the first couple of months. Um, also within this is if a checkbox isn't marked, so there's a few documents that the checkbox is probably this big and it's easy to miss and we do see that a lot. Um, I will point out those documents so you see those. Then the next one is the fax back issues. So what falls into that category is um, documents that aren't faxed back in that are critical. Um, so Stuart, we provide a um, addendum that comes out with the closing docs that lists specifically what we're looking for. Um, page one, page four, we list it out. Now you can provide more, but the minimum is we want those documents faxed back in. Um, those are critical documents for funding the loan, and it lets us kind of get a heads up. If there is an error, we can get it corrected. Um, the other issue on fax fax is if pages are overlapping, um, so maybe you scanned in a copy of the check and it's covering a signature. Um, so just be mindful of that when you're sending a fax back or a scan back in. 
um, that you're allowing one page at a time and, and, and following exactly what we need. The acknowledgement issue, um, we see a lot of, in California, uh, if it doesn't say notary public, you have to write in notary public. Um, so we do see a, a lot of those in California. And um, we also see missing stamps, or if you have a raised seal, um, those we review off of a scanned copy, so not off the, the true paper. And so we can't see that there's a raised seal on it. Um, and so we have suggested to our notary panel to lightly shade over that so that it will show up in a scan so that there's no confusion. We don't have to go back to you or go back to the docs to, to verify that information. And then the final one is printing issues. So we see that it's printed on legal, should be on letter, should be on, and vice versa. Um, so make sure you guys are printing as they should be printed. Um, a, a dual printer works well on that. Some counties also have specific margins on documents, so if you um, adjust the printing to a different page, it'll mess up the margins and it won't fit to what the county's requirements are. Um, so that will reject it and require a re-sign of, of that document. So a, a dual print tray is, is obviously a good option for that. So based on the errors that we've seen, um, I want to focus on kind of best practices. So some best practices are um, your borrower interaction. There are times that your face will probably be the only face that the borrower sees in their loan transaction. Um, we're a, an internet world now, and so your face is gonna be what they remember, and the experience that you give them is gonna be what they remember for their loan. So any interaction that you have with the borrower, make sure you are professional, make sure you are letting them know who you are, who you work for, what you're there to represent, um, when we send out an order assignment, we ask that you confirm the appointment with the borrower. So that's your first interaction with them. You confirm the appointment time, um, the signing location, and let them know who you are. And then also make sure you're not changing the appointment at that time. I know there could be some pushback. Maybe the borrower didn't like that time. If there is pushback from the borrower, they want to change it, and it's it fits your schedule, you can do that, but you need to communicate it back to the person that's hired you. So whether it be directly from a title company or a signing provider, a lot of metrics are based on that date. So we wanna make sure we're getting documents in in a timely fashion, we're gonna go based on that date. So if it's changed, um, it may show that you're late, but it's, it, you're really not. So first impressions are, are big, not just on your phone conversation, but also when you meet the borrower, shake their hand, introduce yourself, uh, dress professionally. We have some lenders that we work with that require business professional dress or business casual dress, so just make sure exactly who um, you're working with. The instructions should clearly indicate um, what the expectation is for your dress attire. So how many people in here have a business card? Okay, how many present your business card to the borrower at the signing? Okay, not as many. That's something that our borrowers do um, look for and have asked for. Well, they didn't present anything. It's not required, but it is something that goes that extra step. And some companies that, that say not to hand them out. Um, obviously, um, whatever company you're working with, follow what their instructions are. So if they say no business cards, don't do that. Uh, but presenting uh, your ID to them so that they can see your face matches, um, that always is helpful. But it, it's just based on whoever's hired you to do that. So be prepared, that's a big one. You gotta be prepared for your signing appointment. Make sure the documents are the correct documents. Everybody makes mistakes, even the title company, but don't tell them. Um, I was gonna say no laugh. <laughs> so make sure that the documents that you got are for the borrower that you're going to that signing appointment. Um, print the docs off in a timely manner before the appointment, know where you're going, um, it's always good to pull up directions beforehand. Another thing to be aware of is that if we assign the order to you, make sure you don't give that order to anyone else. Um, that's a, a big no-no. We do not want to have you guys subcontracting. And the reason for that is we have assigned you. Our lender knows that, that you're the one going. The borrower knows that you're going because we've provided that information. Also, we have your credentials, so your background check and all that, and you pass what 
what we need. That's why you've gotten the order. Um, if you give it to someone else, I can't guarantee that they pass what we need them to pass. Within the, the documents that you get, you get um, lender's instructions. Also, you get the titles, uh, closing instructions. Review those. They're going to tell you everything you need to know. The documents that you need to fax back in, that'll be on there. Also, we'll list if you need to obtain anything at the closing. So, do you need to get an original death cert? Um, our funds do that you need to get. So those are going to be our, in our closing instructions, and it would be uh, great if you read those beforehand so you knew what to do. In terms of all the moving pieces in a loan, the loan officer versus the notary and who should have more working knowledge of the documents. Obviously the loan officer. If it's a loan document, Stewart does include title documents that they may not be aware of. Um, we, we do hope that the loan officer goes over the documents with their borrower beforehand, um, hope being the operative word there. I can't say that they do that all the time, um, but it's something that obviously would make a lot of people's lives a little easier if, if they did. Um, but just in case they don't, that's why it, it's key to kind of get some knowledge of what those docs are. During the appointment, um, no interruption, so don't bring someone along with you to the signing. Uh, even if you leave them in the car, we ask that you don't bring anyone along. Uh, no interruptions with your cell phone, so turn it on silent. Make the borrower feel like they're your only priority for that hour or however long you're at the appointment. Um, so no texts, no phone calls during the, the appointment, unless it's something that you're reaching out to the title company or the lender to get um, some questions answered. Obviously that we would expect you to have your phone um, for. Have patience with the borrower. Um, you probably have seen the documents more than they have, so you are probably more familiar with them and could easily go to the next page and, and rush through it. The borrower may want to read through the documents. I know that takes time and adds to your day, but it's something that they're signing um, their name to something, so allow them that. Um, during the appointment, make sure you go page by page. Um, that is the easiest way to make sure you're not missing a checkbox, a signature line, um, or anything like that. Privacy um, and security of the documents is key. Um, make sure they remain in your possession at all times, unless you're dropping it off at a FedEx or, or UPS location. But we want to make sure that, that they're secure with you, so don't leave them in your car when you go to lunch or something. When you fax them back or scan them back to the, the title company, make sure you've double checked the email address or telephone number. Um, we have seen where they've gone to somebody by one number off. There's a lot of sensitive information on those documents. So if that gets into the wrong hands, that's obviously a, a big deal. And then email. We ask, um, that you never email the docs to the customer. Um, that we will do. Um, so you just alert us, hey, the customer wants a, a copy of their signed loan docs, and we will, once we get those back, we will send them to them. Um, we ask that you not do it because of the security reasons, just because if you type something in incorrectly, then that would definitely be a privacy event that, that we would see. So some common issues and errors that we run into that I want to provide you with. So never provide your opinion at the, the appointment. Not about the lender, their rates, nothing. Even if the borrower asks your opinion, politely decline. And we, we don't want to give them any false information or make them feel like you're trying to push something on them. Fax backs. We do ask that those be sent back within a certain amount of time after the appointment. So uh, that allows us to review them in our system. So make sure you know does the file um, require fax backs? And if it does, how quickly do I need to get those back? The borrower's ID. Um, so I don't know how many of you work with lenders that say none. We don't want a copy of any um, borrower's ID. But most of our lenders have actually implemented that in the last year or so, that they, for security reasons, don't want a copy of the ID uh, obtained during the signing appointment. So just read your instructions and know the company you're working with to know if that's feasible or if that's um, a no for them. I can tell you that that's one of our big metrics with our lenders that we get scored on if we provide them an ID. So 
we look for you guys to, to not do that so that we don't get in trouble as well. So it's kind of twofold there. Raised seals, I just mentioned about lightly shading over them so that we can see them. Incorrect dates written, so 2018, or they've got the numbers switched or, or just a wrong date. Make sure that the date is today's date that, that you're writing, so don't date it in the past or in the, the future. We want it um, on the date of the signing. Make sure any corrections that are made on the documents, you initial so that everybody knows that, that both parties were aware and uh, approving of that. Were you thinking of the readability of the borrower's signature? Is that, a, is that an issue ever for you? The readability of the borrower's signature, and if they write with a scribble but the docs say Bob M. Smith, um, the, the lender, the title company, is going to ask that the signature match what is written underneath the signature line. So we do ask that you politely nudge them, never ever ask them to change their signature. We have had instances like that where we've had to go back to the borrower to have something re-signed, um, but it's on a case by case whether the lender would accept it or not. Trustee verbiage is a big one as well. I can't tell you what to write um, when it comes to trustee verbiage because it ranges based on kind of what our lender is looking for, but that's where your closing instructions are gonna come in handy. Just go through and read those, and it should clearly state there um, how it should be signed. And if ever you're unsure, call the title company. We will gladly answer any questions you have before the appointment so that it would be a successful appointment and, and everything would go off without a hitch. And then the last one is funds from the borrower. Our closing instructions list who um, they should be made out to and the amount. Um, so we just ask that you double check that and make sure it's been written out to the right person and in the right amount. If either of those are incorrect, just call us, let us know, hey, um, this is incorrect and we can either advise you what to do with that or have you just send it the check in anyway. That way we know um, that you caught it, so that's not an error that you guys just picked it up and put it in, in the envelope, but that you caught it and are aware of it. So some problem docs that we run into are these on, on the screen. These are the top ones that I see errors on. So the 4506T, uh, the closing disclosure, the 1003, the right to cancel, um, proof of identity, the HERN, the assumptions agreement, and the pay plan. Um, so the next few slides I am going to show you um, kind of where we see most of the errors on those documents and the right to cancel. So the top line says, I wish to cancel. So we see a lot of that being signed where they really don't wish to cancel. Um, but at the bottom is where the borrower should sign, acknowledging that they've received it. The pay plan, and you can see that the box is this big, it's teeny, um, to check whether they accept it or decline it. So we do see that that checkbox is missed often then the CD at the bottom. Typically this is on like the fifth page and if you could get scrolling through the CD and the first couple of pages are just a bunch of words and just scrolling through, you could miss it. So make sure that last page is uh, signed. The next one is the HERN. So on here there are, again, those wonderful tiny check boxes that um, you guys just need to be mindful and pay attention to so the borrower is checking appropriately and signing. The assumptions agreement, we see that it's not notarized correctly and that the stamp's not provided, uh, so that's why we have included that in this as well. The 4506T, this one again has a, a wonderful tiny little checkbox for you. The checkboxes are, are a big thing that we see that they just weren't um, sent back in, so be aware of that when you're going through the signing appointment. And like I mentioned earlier, it is super easy just to go page by page um, and take your time and review every single page with the borrower. That way you don't miss something, they don't miss something, and what you're providing is, is accurate information to us. So, favorite notaries. So this is something as we've been working with our notaries that we have started implementing. 2017 we had a, a very minimal amount um, of only 30 favorite notaries that we worked with. Um, after the conference last year and talking with notaries and actually getting with the teams that I work with to highlight those wow moments that we have, 
we've increased our favorite notaries up to 215 um, by the end of 2018. So that's a, a great jump, and I love that we have favorite notaries that we're familiar with working with, we're familiar with their business, and we send them the work when we get it in their area. So that's a number I want to continue to grow so that we have our, our own favorites that we continue to work with. And that's one of the reasons why I'm here. I'm here to kind of talk to you about how to, how to get there. Um, I can tell you that most of our um, signing providers, our, most of our signings are done through either a provider, um, so a large signing company that we work with that has their own uh, panel of notaries, or we work with a company similar to SnapDocs, so where we direct engage notaries. Um, we call that kind of our self-serve platform where we have more um, say-so in the notary selected. Um, we have more say-so in the communication that is sent out, and we can track it easier without um, using a middle person. SnapDocs is one of them. The closing exchange is another one. And they said if you are NNA certified, but they already have a profile for you in their, their system. So it's easy. All you have to do is go talk to them about how to get your, your sign on if you want to sign up with them. So these are my wow stories. Of all the escalations that I got um, or that my team received in 2018, these are the only files I got a, a positive feedback on. That's it. Out of almost 2,500 problem files, I got 10 good ones. So that's what I want to increase. This year, I've gotten zero so far, and it's April. Yeah. So people are quick to say when things are bad and horrible, but not quick to say when things are good. So if we can wow the borrower, um, that's when things are going to come back to me. That's how we get you as a favorite. That's how we continue the cycle of, of making things better. So what I wanted to do is kind of highlight some sections on here to let you know um, what it's either the borrower or the lender came back to us with um, so that you know. We had a notary during a hurricane that went above and beyond. It was one of the bad ones that came and like knocked out power for days on end. The notary had an appointment with the borrower at 7 p.m. Well, that was a little late um, because the hurricane was set to hit land. So they were able to work with the borrower to move it to a one o'clock appointment. The notary made sure that they got it in before um, anything hit. The notary constant communication with the borrower on kind of where things were. After the signing appointment had trouble locating an open FedEx um, office. So drove around until he found a FedEx facility that was still open um, to drop the package. Uh, so that's definitely key. Um, one thing that was presented as a positive thing that I'm going to say um, don't do was that he offered to take pictures um, with his wife's cell phone to send the docs back to us. Um, so A, it wasn't his own phone, it was someone else's phone. So that's uh, a privacy issue for me. We, we never want photos taken of the documents just because they do contain sensitive information, account numbers, uh, social security numbers, all of that. Other than that, going out of his way to make sure they got the appointment in, driving around to the FedEx um, offices to make sure the docs were, were sent back in, amazing. And obviously, uh, I have three paragraphs, so our borrower was super impressed with that. Some other feedback that we got was the notary was helpful and informative, uh, took the time to answer the questions. So knowing what you do and having the patience. She had a lot of experience and the signing went easily. She made it convenient by working around my schedule. So making the appointment adjustment based on the borrower's schedule. Extremely personable and polite. Good attitude and enjoyable. And the last one I have here is the borrower called to let us know that the notary was very professional and kind. She said it made her experience much better and thought someone should know his worth. That's amazing. Like the wow moments are definitely something I wanted to pass on. So I w picked through some of our not so wow moments. So this way you guys hear the good, the bad, and maybe some of the ugly as well. If, if we get negative feedback, 100% I reach out. Um, because there's always a, he said, she said side of the story, and I want to know from both perspectives. Um, we've gotten um, an escalation just last week or, or the week before an email that said the notary um, was 
rushing the borrower because she had to get to her son Michael's um, softball game. We called the, the notary and the notary said, my son is 23 years old and doesn't play baseball. So, so we, we, we look at both sides of the story. I, I don't want to ding a notary for anything if, if it's non-factual. Yep. Customer feels that the notary was unprofessional in their departure because they just got up and left. No thank yous, so nothing, just leaving. The notary seemed to know nothing about the requirements of the loan. We may not expect you guys to know about the requirements of the loan, but she didn't seem to think we needed a second form of ID. So make sure you guys know what on your verification form when it lists that, that you guys are pulling what is required. Notary requested a fee increase after the signing appointment, but before she would ship the documents. So the notary held our documents hostage which doesn't put a good taste in my mouth um, to work with a notary like that. Um, obviously, if there is uh, a reason for a fee increase, a, you took a trip and the borrower didn't show, and then you went back a second time, those are feasible, but um, this was definitely not one of those requests. The borrower stated that the notary's phone rang constantly and she took several calls while doing the signing. So that borrower definitely didn't feel like they were important during that appointment. A uh, notary refused to accept a check and advised the customer just to mail it to the lender. Um, so we do ask, um, I believe with the exception of Virginia, that you do obtain and ship back funds. Typically for Virginia, we'll provide you with a second FedEx label to provide to the borrower so they can ship it. We never just say ship it to the lender or anything like that. Notary called the borrower and told them that the FedEx package may have been mailed to the wrong address. So yeah, that took us several days to figure out if it was or was not. It wasn't, thankfully, um, but put a borrower in panic that the docs may have been shipped to the wrong place. Fax back sent to the wrong number, so obviously that's a privacy concern because now someone else has their social security number um, and all of their personal information. This one was my favorite because I worked with this notary directly. Notary shredded the documents after the closing because of a fee dispute with the signing company that they were working with. Didn't ship them back to us, was upset, and just shredded the documents. Yeah, that notary didn't get another order after that from us. Um, obviously, if you're not getting paid by your provider, that is a big concern. Um, but don't hold the documents hostage. Don't shred the documents. Don't, don't do anything like that, but provide communication to us that you're not getting paid by whomever you're working with if it's been a reasonable amount of time, and, and we will definitely help you to get paid. Um, if you're doing the work for us, I want you guys to get paid, obviously. Someone is getting paid, so you guys should get paid. There are many instances where a second set of documents wasn't printed and provided to the customer. So this is where it'll be key to review the documents beforehand. There are some instances where we'll provide both sets of documents. So you just print one, um, one time and you get all of them. Sometimes you'll have to print two. So we do ask that you take a second set of documents to the, the closing so the borrower has an unsigned package and then we can send them a copy of a signed package if they wanna see that. When they arrived at the closing, the notary had another person with him, and to his surprise, the notary was training. Um, so the notary brought someone to train um, their, their business. The bar stated that when they were signing, the notary did not know where to sign his own name and was unfamiliar with the entire package. Not, not really good to train somebody if that's the experience they're having. Due to the notary's insufficiencies, the actual signing took two hours and 15 minutes. So that's definitely a lot of time. Um, once the borrowers completed the signing, now this is a good thing, I like this, the notary advised that they could not leave until he reviewed for accuracy. So he wanted to go through the, the docs and double check things, which is good that he did because there were 17 pages that he missed them signing on. So that review took an additional 30 minutes and he left the appointment only to call them 15 minutes later that there were more pages that they did not sign. It's good to go through the document page by page, but I don't know how he missed 17 pages. <laughs>
missed some dates on the docks, uh, the borrowers are now on vacation, so we can't re-execute. The notary said she would be there between 1 and 2 and didn't show up until 3.45, and then received a phone call from her uncle about her sick dog, which she took during the signing. Then, when backing out of the driveway, knocked over two of the neighbor's lights. So we kindly ask you not to park in the borrower's driveway. Park on the street if there's street parking, and that way there's no risk of um, actually hitting anything. Not that I think any of you would do that, um, but that way we don't run into the risk. And now the, the last not so wow is the notary showed up with pink paint all over her, said that she was painting her kitchen. She had a hard time going over the documents and failed to obtain a check from the borrower. So your appearance is key. Um, we indicate that we'd like you to be business professional. Don't show up in flip-flops. This is a business transaction for the borrower, so you showing up in business attire lets them know that there's a professional setting that they're gonna sit through. It also lets them know you're setting the precedence out the gate with them. But just to recap and kind of go through some things, um, be prompt and organized when you go to the signing appointment. Have all of the information that you need. Did you grab your journal? Did you grab your stamp? I have gotten those escalations that the notary showed up and all of that was in her husband's car and not with her. Um, so make sure you have all that before you leave. Have extra pens. You never know when your ink pen is going to run out during the signing, and they have to sign a lot. Double check all the pages before leaving, so make sure you have gone through and checked for signatures. Those wonderful check boxes that I'm hoping you guys will never forget after today. Uh, make sure the dates are right. So we've seen some packages that page one shows the right date, but page two is a different date. So go through um, page by page, line by line, just to make sure you've captured everything you need to capture. When in doubt, call the title company. Our closing instructions clearly list a phone number um, that you can reach us. And we're there late, um, later business hours. So after standard business hours, we still um, have folks in the office that can answer um, your your questions. If you're hired by a signing company, you can also call them. Or the NNA offers a number if there's something that, that you're unsure of in terms of um, maybe a state law for you, you can reach out to them. Also, this is 100% key. Stay up to date on your credentials. So I can't tell you how many times that I have a notary I want to work with that their background check's expired or their NNA cert was expired, or, or they don't have the, the proper stuff uploaded. So we work with companies that um, have to go through the docs and review those. So they're gonna be reviewing it and letting you know, but a, a system like SnapDocs that we work out of, um, your stuff could expire and no one, I don't know if they reach out to you, but if it's expired, that's, we can't use you because um, that's a concern. if. If something was to happen um, in the last year and your background check, check has expired, we can't run the risk of, of utilizing your services unless we're clear that, that everything is good to go with you. Okay, that's, that's all I got today. All right, thanks guys.